moved here in 79, I did a, my solo act at the time. I'm trying to remember where the stage was. I know the, the stage, the big stage, I believe, was right here. And we, we play for 50 bucks and, and a beer. Well, that hasn't changed. No. <laughs> the ceilings would be gone. <laughs> I'm so glad you guys reopened this place. At 16, I got my first international gig. I got asked to play with my little band, which was kind of a Herb Alperty kind of thing, at the Montreal World's Fair in 67. Wow. So we spent a week up there uh, and supported myself during college because the deal with my parents was, we'll match you dollar for dollar. For, for two years, I played strip clubs and or a circuit where these you know, comedians and dancers and stuff, they would be in Baltimore one night and Syracuse the next and then Hartford the next and then we made friends with uh, some, of the, some of the dancers that, that would come through. Uh, most of them were poor old things just trying to hold it together and support their families with a couple, you know, foxy ones. <laughs> would... <laughs> hey! So, but that's as close to being on stage with no clothes as I got. <laughs> started the, the Max Creek Band in, in 71, kind of musicologically uh, interested in finding little ditties that, you know, unless you're a real folky purist, most, most of the hippies didn't hear the stuff like that. As that band began to get more popular and expand, um, I wanted to do more, you know, the Gary Davis, John Hurt, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, I really liked it idea of the finger style guitar, I just, just got tired of strumming rhythm. I, I parted ways with them in the late 70s. Primarily did solo stuff until I moved back here. That's right. Then in the early 90s, I started a band called Tambora. in the Caribbean is called the tutu and um, you know I, I've kind of I've kind of devolved from the trumpet to play play the conch shell now <laughs> but you know it's been so much fun when I first started going there and of course the West Indies is you know uh, Afrocentric culture, and so it tends to be more community oriented than individual oriented. There's a whole lot of community support for the nation, much like the Berkshires. First ones, the first evidence of the things that there's some etchings from the Civil War that shows uh, encamped uh, soldiers playing uh, on uh, instruments uh, made out of cigar boxes. Looks one looks to be a fiddle, the other looks like a, sort of a banjo. So they've been around a while, and, and poor folks who couldn't afford catalog instruments or anything would make their own things. And uh, I took my oil olive oil can and fudged around with it and put a pickup in it. And, uh, then I built number two, and then number three, number four. From the turn of the uh, uh, 20th century, it's the Canadian uh, Benson and Hedges cigarette box. It still has the, the, the tax stamp on it across the bottom and, and all, and it has a really nice sound. See, so how many again? You made? Over 170. Yes, I raise my head, I set my sails. What's the first piece of music you remember playing? Do you remember it? Red River Valley. Can you play On this? Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's the red. Ha <laughs> ha! 